It's time now for the life and times of history's greatest horror movie slashers abridged survival guide with Ali and Jay. Today's subject, Leonard Beaumont. Horror movies are notorious for being derivative every now and again. But if any one film studio took Mask Maker to court for plagiarism, it wouldn't just lose, it would die in prison. This movie is basically an asylum knockoff that just happened to be 40 years too late. Only minus the fun. We would do a drinking game for every stolen trope, but I don't want to die to this movie. So instead, we're gonna use the handy dandy theft counter. Hold on to your f***ing hats. So, Mask Maker tells the tale of Leonard Beaumont, a deformed killer who wears his victims' faces as masks. <laughs> that didn't take long. Born in the 1950s, Leonard was the bastard love child of Mr. Tucker and Lydia the French Witch. Mrs. Tucker's aware of the affair, yet bizarrely allows the Beaumonts to live in their house, which looks exactly like the one from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake. <laughs> Oh, but hold on. Leonard doesn't live in dumb old Texas. He lives all the way in Louisiana. Anyhow, Lydia's still boinking her landlord, but little do they know that clever old Miss Tucker would sniff them out and not take too kindly. Jolly willikers. Who would have possibly guessed that letting the woman your cheating husband had a f***ing child with to live in your house might lead to even more affairs? As a result, Mrs. Tucker pulls a Sweeney Todd on Leonard, resulting in the mentally challenged boy to get infected with a face-eating virus, forcing him to leave in the basement. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mrs. Tucker tries blowing the witch's brains out, but Mr. Tucker strangles her just in time, and I guess that's where Leonard first learns about murder. One night in 1961, Witchy Poo kidnaps a baby from the Peck family for a ritual. She kills the baby, granting Leonard the power of immortality. Kinda. And of course, the Pecks show up and hang Lydia. Yeah, the crazed mother kills a child in the name of her deformed son and is killed for her actions. <laughs> Leonard strikes back but gets impaled by a stick and... dies? So much for immortality. Thanks, Mom. They bury Leonard in the backyard, abandoning the house for the rest of its days. That is, until modern day when a couple buys the house and spends the weekend celebrating generic final girl's birthday with friends. Here's something interesting. One of the couples has a Slave Leia thing going on. I'd normally be stoked for anything Slave Leia, but it's actually depressing that of all the horror movies I've ever seen, some of the most relatable characters are in f***ing Mask Maker. Blandy McBoyfriend unknowingly finds Leonard's graveside and yanks the stick from the dirt, bringing him back to life. Alright, time out. Did the Pecs know this stick had magic powers or were they just lucky? Of all the weapons a bunch of old country rubes could have mustered up for an evening of vigilante justice and they just happened to grab the one stick that had anti-voodoo powers? Or is French voodoo just allergic to sticks? Yeah, that's how you kill Chucky. Screw bullets and giant fans and air. The key all along was wood. And besides that, never mind immortality being reversed by a freaking stick. What good is immortality when you still have a flesh-eating virus? At any rate, he sure does look an awful lot like a certain bald-headed, droopy-eyed zombie man-child, doesn't he? Leonard starts picking off the 40-year-old college kids one by one, not just for invading his territory, but to avenge his mother. We never even get to see the Slave Leia chick wear the outfit. But that doesn't mean that I can't! And for some reason, Leonard skins his victims' faces and begins wearing them as masks. Ironic how for a movie called Mask Maker, the whole mask aspect feels out of left field. I get he's ugly and ugly killers in horror movies wear masks, but this just feels arbitrary. Leonard does it because Leatherface does it. The end. Look at Leatherface, he was a butcher, he was a craftsman, he had a gender identity complex and wore very specific masks for whatever given chore he needed to do, otherwise he couldn't function properly. Leonard has none of that. He just sort of decides to tear one off and slap it on because ugly. Not only that, but he makes masks of nearly every kill and only wears them for a few minutes at a time. As a result, the masks feel more like a checklist chore and less like a meaningful character trait. And I thought the mask in Midsummer was random as hell. So yeah, Leonard kills just about everyone and skins their faces. Leonard chases generic final girl through the house and at one point he flings his weapon at her and just barely misses her by a hair. Huh. So is that Jason Voorhees or Silent Night Deadly Night? Either way I say it counts. So generic final girl hides in the basement where Blandy McBoyfriend is being held. Before they can escape, Leonard shows up and skins Blandy's face, 
unbeknownst to him that Final Girl is watching the whole time. Oh, spicing things up now, are we? You're not just stealing from the Texas Chainsaw remake, now you're stealing from the prequel to the remake. Wow, really shooting for the stars, I see. So, how does the Final Girl finally save the day? She throws on an old dress that belonged to Leonard's mom and tricks him into thinking mommy's alive. His mask is ripped off and she stabs him through the eye with the stick of death and he falls on the stick. She stabs him in the back with the stick and you can tell he's dead because his hand stops twitching. We're not playing the drinking game, but f*** it. <laughs> So the cops show up, but one of them yanks the stick of truth from Leonard's back, so he springs to life and kills every cop. Oh, and Leonard doesn't just steal one of their faces, but their clothes, too. Ew. Thank f we didn't see that chick as Slave Leia. Also, why the f did he do that? Meanwhile, generic final girl's headed home when DUN DUN! Leonard pulls up and snaps her neck. Yep, immediately after being recovered from the crime scene, the killer comes back to life and twists somebody's head off. So he stuffs her body in the police car and drives off into the Wait, sun. Wait, when the flying f*** did he learn how to drive? So the killer, who never could have possibly known how to drive, somehow knows how to f***ing drive? So, where exactly is the movie's dumbest trope leading him? Back home? Sure, cause nobody's gonna check on a crime scene where a squad of cops never came back from. Or is he gonna start a new life? I guess cops with saggy, bloody faces hauling dead chicks with backwards heads is pretty common in the bayou. But let's turn negatives into positives. The way I see it, either ending is implausible enough to guarantee we'll never get a sequel. And it's not even that the movie is all that awful. I mean, it's not good, but I've seen worse. This is as generic as movies get. Every single movie resorts to rehashing cliches, but this movie straight up steals things beat for beat. And to add insult to injury, this movie isn't satirical or self-aware or clever at all about it. They play every stolen trope incredibly seriously. It's actually kind of arrogant. If you're gonna be this cliched about something, at least be clever and fun about it like Hatchet. This movie is basically Hatchet if Hatchet sucked. Even the freaking poster's a knockoff! If Leonard just tears faces off and slaps him on, why does his mask have laces here? Because the collector came out a year prior and made a lot of money. Today's moral, Slave Leia makes everything better. Yes. Yes it does.